Hello everybody, my name is Aceface, welcome back to the T0 to T6 Abyss series. We're here farming the T4 Firestorms, we're up against a pretty deadly wave here, so we need to be extra careful. It's the Vedmac wave with a lot of starvers. So here we're going to have to take into consideration our cap a lot, make big considerations here. We deploy the drones, we can lock up some of these biocommutative caches. Maybe we can even go for, actually we'll have the drones just directly go for some of these damage because this is a high risk wave. We don't want to take any chances here. I'll go towards the bioadaptive cache here. Armor repair on. Let's go, good. Now I'll go for this starting red mech. Get that web on and kill them fast. We need to kill them fast before it's too late. Get all the starvers on us here. Everything is locked up. Yeah, all the starvers are locked up. Okay, good. So now we just have to focus on taking them out here. We're going to try to avoid overrepping too much because that can be dangerous. We waste a lot of capacity necessarily. What kind of resistor have we got? Minus 50%. Okay, that's going to make us a little bit more tankier, but they'll also take a little bit longer to kill. Let's use the armor repair. Good. Next one here. Let's go. Let's take them out and recall those drones taking a bit of damage. Let's see if we can get that web fire on him. There we go. Good. Web on him. Great. Let's get a bit closer here. When we've taken out this starving uh, Red Mac, then the coast should be clear. Let's get those drones on him. Good. And then it should be alright. He is also going down relatively quickly as well. But the conflag does a lot of damage here. Yeah, you see that cap is draining very quickly. But it's good that we're prioritizing the Vedmax because most of the DPS is in these guys. We won't have to do at all as much uh, tanking if we take out all the Vedmax. Let's go here. Let's get close to him. Come on, let's just catch the web here. There we go. One more cycle there. I think that's enough to catch him. Let's see if we can get close to him. No, we did not manage to get close to him even though we used one cycle there. Oh, come on now. Get that con flag going on. Try to get a bit closer. Tank seems to be stabilizing slightly now. Good. It's a little bit difficult to get in a good optimal range when you're not able to web, but it seems like it's going all right anyway. Great. Okay, now everything is stabilized a lot. Let's go to that bite out of cache. Split up all the drones here and everything that we can target. There we go. And go for that. Damavik here. Well, I hope that drone doesn't get killed. Let's recall these drones that have got taken a lot of damage. Imperial Navy Multi Frequency is good to use against the small stuff because they've got a bit better tracking than the other ones. Let's get a little bit close to them. Here we go. Good. None of these Damaviks have followed them. That's good. There we go. And then the last ones here. Oh, look at that. They're all empty. That's unfortunate. We're not going to bother with the MTU and there's so few of the extraction nodes that are containing anything of value. I need to buy adaptive here. Come on now. I recall those drones. It seems like they're wanting to keep a range this, da this tangling Damovic trying to just take my drones. 15 million. That's pretty good. Transfer conduit. Let's go. Take and web him just when he gets in range. Can't flag. Good. Vo volleyed. There we go. We completed that wave very well. I like that. Here it shows that you need to focus on the red max because we could have starving, you know, starving uh, down of X here. But I prefer to just eliminate all the red max because there's hardly any DPS left when you've destroyed the red max. Almost all the DPS is in those red max, and especially when you've got lots of red max like that. The down of X can do a lot of damage when they spool up, but nothing compared to the red max. Okay, let's continue here. This is a pretty easy wave. Just some random drones. Put the get the and the Rodivas. It's a very easy one. See if we can volley some of these rogue drones on the way here. Get those acolytes on the extraction node. See if we can maybe get some volley with the scorch already and destroy them on the way here. That's good. Look at that. You see that? You get some nice volleys when you're at range there we go nice and then get the drones on that one over here the bioadaptive that's good Let's see if we can get the zealot a bit closer 
now we'll switch over to close range ammunition because all the rogue drones are around us. Let's go. Great. Oh, a lot of damage from the demon automatic so Let's recall those drones. There's medium or even one over there. Good. All those shields got zapped there in one volley of the Devon Automata Suppressor. Well, like not volley, but just like being in the range of the Devon Automata Suppressor for just a few seconds seems to be enough to annihilate the shields of my acolytes. Great. Get the forecaster here destroyed. Try taking out the Scorch, or with the Scorch, the Ember Lance here, the little drone. Good. The Rodivas, they're good at repairing these guys, but we destroy them so quickly that they don't have enough time to be able to repair them, the Rodivas. Like, I can see that this Spark Lance here he is getting repaired, but we're destroying them so quickly that the Rodivas can't even... They have no chance of saving them. Let's go there. Great. Six million, okay. Next room. Imperial Navy, good. Keep a range 500 here, great. And then we go with the Scorch. There we go. And now for Rodiva here. Just the Rodivas left. And we'll use those drones as well to get a little bit extra. Extra damage. And we can use the M2 to pull in that extraction node that's just looming over there, 53 kilometers away. It shouldn't take too long to get him in. You can just wait here. I'm, the Rodiva is a little bit like, uh, out of conflag range or the optimal range of conflag, so I'm just sitting here with the Scorch instead. Getting some pretty good hits, but obviously less DPS because it's Scorch. Why well, is the DPS about Scorch 400 and then you can get like 700 with the conflag? But good that our drones are able to assist. And they're not being targeted either, so that's also another great thing. I'll try conflag here, they're getting a little bit closer. Are we able to get glances off shots, I'd say? Grazes. Okay, it doesn't seem like conflag is doing too well. And getting some hit shots, okay, that's good. Depends a little bit what, where he is, this Rodiva. He's hovering outside and in about the optimal range of the conflag. Good, now I'll open up this MTU. We got 1.5 million, that's not too much, but it's better than nothing. Recall those drones. Great, now let's go to the next room. We can pause the armor repair just to save a bit of capacitor. Get the scorch going on. So keep in mind guys, this is a pretty expensive fit we've got. It's not a cheap fit. But it's something we've worked towards over a long period of time. And it is also very applicable to the next tier of Abyss, you could say. So this is what we're going to be eventually running the T5s in. Just with some slight alterations. Blast grip, okay. These guys are going to hard web us because of how many webs we've got going on here. Great, so now we'll go to the biodactive cache. So many, we've got so many of these webifying drones. Let's go with the con flag on this spark grip. Because he is going to do quite a bit of damage and use that armor repair. And good to get that going on. We've got really high explosive resistance. A lot of these guys are doing explosive damage, so we should have a pretty easy time mitigating the damage. And we're going to take extra damage because these guys are pretty close to us with the blue cloud. I think it'll go alright. So many snare casters, they really catch us here. Did we manage to destroy the spark grip, I think? Yeah. There's just a bunch of blast grips left. That's good. And lock up that biodactive cache. The great thing about these uh, rogue drone battle crews is that they like to be close. So we never have to really think too much about them not being close enough for us to use max damage ammunition. The only problem is when you're close to these guys, they will hit hard, really hard. But they only do certain damage types, and in this case they do explosive damage, which is a very highly tanked resist on the zealot here. Okay, I'll soon deploy the MTU. You can even deploy it now, to be honest. Deploy it. There we go. Now for the blast grip here. I wonder what we're going to get here. We've got that raging gamma that constituted major the majority of the loot we got from that one room. We'll see if we get any other cool rare drops here. Only time is to tell. Only time will tell. 
Great. Okay, now we can deploy some of these acolytes and we'll use the Imperial Navy on these guys because it's got good tracking. Come on, destroy them. Yeah, good. We're eliminating these snare casting drones really easily here. They're doing a tiny bit of damage to our drones, but not so much actually. Yeah, we should recall them because they will kill our drones fast. And we've got lots of webs. So they'll be able to catch our drones and kill them very quickly if they get good hits on them. Let's go. Good. The extraction node is coming soon. Soon, soon, soon. This was a pretty quick uh, T4 firestorm. In a little bit over 12 minutes. And our ship has not got a lot of DPS modules, not really optimized so well for speed, so it is pretty good. It's more like focused on tank here. Destroy that snare caster with the drones, they can help a lot. Open up that MTU. Seven million, okay. There's something, not so much, but there's something. So that was another episode of the T0 to T6 Abyss series. We, The main thing I would say here is that we encountered one of the very difficult Triglavian waves, the Vedmak waves with lots of starvers that can be very dangerous, but we managed to get through it with uh, a pretty decent uh, margin as well. I was very happy about that. I, was, I liked how we focused the Vedmaks and really destroyed them very quickly. I felt like everything became so much easier when we focused on them first. In a previous episode, I didn't actually focus on them and we did have a bit of a dangerous situation. So I'm glad I did that here. We saw the result of our actions played a big role in how the site turned out. So that's enough for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.